Hi there and welcome to Boondal Wetlands. I'm Emily. And I'm Mike. And today we are learning about migratory shorebirds. Uh, oh. Migratory shorebirds. So what is a migratory shorebird? A migratory shorebird. Well first Mike, there are two kinds of shorebirds and shorebirds like to live by the water. There's resident and migratory. So resident shorebirds live locally like you or I, but migratory shorebirds, they travel all around the globe. Okay, so these birds make a journey of over 12,000 kilometres flying from Boondal Wetlands all the way to the Northern Hemisphere, places mm. like Siberia and Alaska. And the path that these birds travel along is called the East Asian Australasian Flyway. What a mouthful. So the Boondal mm. Wetlands play a really, really important role in these migratory shorebirds mm. because they come here every summer to feed um, on the mudflats mm. and also rest from their long journey. Wow. So, should we go check this out? Yeah, definitely. Bit? Let's go check it out. Let's get out of here. Let's go. So we're at the Boondal Wetlands bird hide right now. Ooh. Yeah, so I have to keep it quiet because there's a lot of birds around. Hmm. So before we were talking about that big flyaway and they come down here during mm -hmm. summer and you were saying they come down to eat, but what are they eating down here? Okay, so it's really important they can only eat when the tide is low because mm. they eat on the mudflats. Oh. Yeah, so they're eating things like worms, mollusks, seeds, all wow. sorts. Yeah, but when the tide's high, they have to roost. Hey Mike, who's your friend? So this is one of the smallest migratory shorebirds. This is a redneck stint. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, this is obviously a model and it weighs the same weight as a redneck stint real one. So it's, oh, but that's so light. Yeah, it's about the weight of a chicken egg. Wow. So when it makes its journey, after that long flight of 12,000 kilometers, mm. it has to feed. It loses half of its body weight. So it's just <gasps> feeding and feeding on those mud flats. It would be so tiny. Mm. So like I said, it's the smallest. Mm. We also have the largest, which is the Easter curlew. Mm -hmm. This guy's probably my favorite. But what I'd like to know is how a bird this tiny can fly all of that way. So to answer your question, Emily, the birds, like other animals, take on adaptations to deal with the environment that they're living in. So to survive on the mudflats, shorebirds have a couple of key adaptations. They have flexible toes and long legs to help them stay on top of the mud and not sink in. Another adaptation are their beaks. Some of them have very long curved beaks so they can dig right down and pull up some worms or some of those mollusks and different food sources. And some of them have short, sharp beaks and that allows them to pick on the surface. So Emily, before you were talking about the East Asian Australasian flyway. Yep. Yeah, so I'm a bit confused because the birds are down here in our summer to feed. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they just stay here all the time? Why do they go up all the way to the Northern Hemisphere? Well, Mike, there's a really good answer to why they fly all the way up to the Northern Hemisphere. And that is, it's perfect for breeding. So up here in the winter, it's really cold and iced over and it's not very, it's, it is quite hostile for migratory shorebirds. But in the summer when the snow melts, it's perfect breeding conditions. There's lots of insects and little bugs for the babies to eat when they hatch out. So what we're looking at here is a year in the life of the migratory shorebirds. So you'll find from September all the way through to around mid-March is when we've got the birds visiting us here down at the Boondal Wetlands and, and throughout um, the Southern Hemisphere. Um, during our winter, the birds then fly all the way back up to the Northern Hemisphere. So there's 34 different species of migratory shorebirds that visit Boondal every year, which is pretty astonishing. Once the migratory shorebirds leave Boondal wetlands at the end of summer, they fly north along the flyway, heading up towards Russia and Alaska. But sometimes they need to stop off and have a bit of a rest and a, and a feed. One of the places they like to stop is in Yatsuhigata, our sister wetland in Japan. Now you may be wondering, how on earth do these birds know where they're going? How do they navigate? Do they have a map and a compass in their back pocket? <laughs> Google Maps, I think. Google Maps. Oh, I'm just joking, Emily. <laughs> they can use a range of different ways to mm. find their way. Um, through the stars, 
Yeah. Um, also, listening for sounds. So when they mm. hear the waves crashing on the on the shore, that gives them the sun. They might be near land and not over sea. Wow. So yeah. they're using a lot of different senses. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I also heard they have a special internal compass that helps them navigate north to south. Wow. Mm. So that nearly brings us to the end of our lesson today, Mike. But there's a couple more things we need to talk about. Unfortunately, many of these shorebirds are under threats. They're under threat from development across the globe, but also threats locally, like people not having their dogs on the leash. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, the if beach. dogs are off the leash, they're chasing the birds when they're trying to feed, right? Yeah, and then they're using all their energy trying to run away and they can't rest and feed. So I guess if you're down at the beach and you get your dog on a leash, they're not going to disturb these birds, right? That's right. That so sounds so simple. Oh, maybe that's an action that we can take. Well, not maybe, that's an action we can definitely take, right? Definitely. Also rubbish and pollution. So not only can you put your own rubbish in the bin, but taking three for the sea. Who's heard of that saying? I don't know, I have now. So three <laughs> for the sea, what do you mean? Three pieces of rubbish? Three pieces of rubbish every day. Yep. Putting them in the bin and helping everyone on the planet. Wow, that's conserve. so easy, isn't it? Yeah. I stop at three, you could take more, right? You could take more. So that's an action that you guys could do. Taking three pieces of rubbish, making sure your dog's on a leash and even cleaning up after your dog, picking up its Oh, definitely, like that. that's a given, Mike. Yeah. And if we can do these little actions, guys, we can really help these birds to, you know, thrive and um, thrive and survive every year. Yeah. So thanks for joining us here today at Boonda Wetlands to learn about migratory shorebirds. Yeah, I hope you found it really interesting, and I hope you remember about the actions that you can take to help protect and look after these birds. Brilliant. We hope you see you soon. Catch you later.